Well, good morning and welcome to the Saturday morning power breakfast. Now, let me check here. I got my drink here. I got, let's see here, I got my drink and I got, uh, let's see, my, my utensils. I got my notes. My friend, I'm ready to break bread with you. Hope you're having an awesome day. Listen, the purpose of these Saturday morning power breakfasts is, is to really get you equipped for the week ahead, uh, to really kind of end the week on a good note and uh, get you leveraged into next week with some things that are going to help you move forward. Uh, thank you so much for your comments on my other Saturday morning power breakfasts. You're, uh, they're definitely welcome. You know, we take this information and after we do it live here, we put it on different platforms and so forth. And one of the questions I got was, why do you only do this on Saturday mornings? And let me explain why. The reason why we do these on Saturday morning is because the goal is to have something that's not too long, because I'm not in love with hearing myself talk, something that's not too long that will give you some food for thought that you can go back to over the course of the week and truly, going forward, you can go back there, get some tidbits, that then you can put into action for yourself to help you to your goals and dreams. First, let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Tony Stewart of Tony and Angie Stewart. And uh, people know me also as Blessed Brother. And I'm excited to be here with you today to help you get some new distinctions and move closer, as I said before, to your goals and dreams. Well, the whole goal of the Saturday Morning Power Breakfast is to help you join a club uh, that we are excited about called the 5% Club. You know, there's statistics that say that at the age of 65, 62% are dead broke. 28% are dead. 5% are still working. And then you got the 5% that you want to be a part of who are either wealthy or financially stable. You know, you have financial dignity. And I want that for you. Today, we're going to be talking about how you to get your mind right around this. We're going to be talk, discussing as build what's the velocity of money, and then we're going to share a three-step formula for wealth creation. So with that being said, let's get into it. As we've mentioned before, I keep saying we, I, <laughs> as I've mentioned before, I'm speaking on behalf of Angie too, but as I've mentioned before, Earl Nightingale talks before uh, a lot about the fact that success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. And what's exciting about that is that as you take any step towards your worthy ideal, your worthy goals, you are a success, my friend. So be happy about that now. But it's not something you have to wait for. Sometime in the future, you say, well, when I achieve this or when I do this, I will be a success. No, my friend. The second you start taking those steps to move towards those goals and dreams, you are successful. And dare I say, even for watching this, you are a success. Why? Because my goal here is to give you information. You know, I've invested thousands and thousands, I mean tens of thousands of dollars in learning from the best in terms of business success, spiritual success, how to move forward in your life in a, in a successful way. And my goal here is to not only have invested that, not only to have learned it and applied it in, a, in my life, for great, you know, to great effect, but also to teach you, to give you some of those skills. So number one, you don't have to make those same investments. Number two, you could add this to whatever investments you're making in knowledge and again, give you an edge in moving forward. So again, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Now, what's important in knowing about this? You know, we know we see the progressive realization, that means taking daily steps. Worthy means that it's something good, right? Well, I think where most people trip up has to do with getting their mind right. And what I mean by that is truly dreaming. You know, if you don't have that worthy ideal, if you don't have that goal that you're working for, then how can you move toward it? You know, over the last few years, there's been so much chaos and stuff in the world that people have just been trying to just keep their heads above water. We hear about inflation, we hear about recession, we hear about all these things going on, and it can make it difficult to dream. 
but I'm encouraging my friend to go ahead and dream. It's time to get your hopes up. You know, uh, you may have some loved ones in your life who says, oh, please don't get your hopes up. I don't want you to be disappointed. Let me tell you something. There is no one who's ever achieved anything without getting their hopes up. So it's time to get your hopes up. You know, you might be going to visualize. You may have a uh, desire to have become job optional. What does that mean? That you may stay or keep the job, but you know you don't have to be there. How much more effective would you be if you were on your current job right now and you knew that you didn't have to be there? You're there because you want to be. That's being job optional. I want that for you, my friend. And then, you know, I, I took a picture of someone's dream board here. And uh, this is cool. It has some good stuff on it. But the only thing I didn't like was the lower left-hand corner. Because that lower left-hand corner has a lotto, hitting the lotto. Let me tell you something, my friend. You hit the lotto when you decide to do something more positive with your life. You hit the lotto when you decide that you're going to not just fight the current of media and everything else that's telling you you have to live under your means and all this stuff. You're fighting, you hit the lotto when you understand that you can think and grow rich. You can learn some new distinctions that will move you forward. That's your lotto. And it can lead to all these other things that this person put on their dream board. I love what Grant Cardone says. He says, close the distance between you and your target. And when he said this, I heard him, he was watch, I was watching him do a video. And uh, whether you like Grant or not is beside the point. You can learn something from almost anyone if you're willing to say, is this person an example or is this person a warning? And if they're a warning, look what they did and don't do that. And if they're an example, get what you can. Now, most people are somewhere in the middle. Get the good, leave the rest behind. It's like you're going to a smorgasbord. You don't eat everything on the smorgasbord, I hope. What you do is you take the right thing that's for you and you leave the rest behind. Do the same thing with anyone you reach out to, including myself. Get the stuff you need that's going to help you move forward and leave the rest behind. But he said, close the distance between you and your target. Now, what does that mean? That means get out there. After these last few years, people have been you know, kind of shut in and so forth, and they haven't really gotten out there. Take advantage of the opportunity to get out there. And if it's a dream home like this couple in the upper left, go and look at some homes. You know, in my area, they do things called a parade of homes where you can walk through the houses and see them and get some ideas of how you can either uh, fix up your house or get a new one all together. Take advantage of those things. You know, test drive the car. If it's a charity you want to give to, go to that charity. Volunteer. It might be that when you go there and you volunteer and you learn more about their vision and what they're doing and so forth, it fires you up to even want to be more charitable to them because you know what they're involved in. Again, close the distance between you and your target. When you get your mind right, you know, um, Warren Buffett says, invest in your mind so your mind can feed your pockets. And what he's really meaning is not just feeding your pockets so you can sit on a wad of cash. He's meaning that you feed in your pockets because you can have choices. You can have choices of what you do, how, who you help, all the things you want to do. You can do that, but you got to feed your mind. Get your mind right first. Then we'll be talking about that more on uh, subsequent Saturday morning power breakfasts. So let's get to the velocity of money. What's this concept all about? Well, years ago, I had the opportunity to really dive into the teachings of Robert Kiyosaki and actually spend some time with him. Um, I remember going into a Borders bookstore here in Columbus, Ohio, and getting a hold of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. When I, by the time I saw him or read his first book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I'd also, he'd also put out the sequel, which was the Cash Flow Quadrant, and we can talk about that later. But I was so taken by those two books that when I found out he was um, coming to this part of the country and doing some things, I said, not only do I want to go to it, but I want to be a part of it. So I actually worked with him and, and working those events and so forth and actually got an opportunity to actually work some stands for him and sell some product and so forth, which was cool because by then I was so convinced that a lot of the stuff that he was saying was true, that I wanted to, number one, help other people like hopefully I'm doing right now. 
help, help other people with that information. Well, one of the concepts he taught me was the velocity of money. And the velocity of money is very simple. When you put your money into something, your mindset needs to be how fast you can get that initial investment back. And let me give you an example of this. I work with a number of people, and for years, I've traded the markets. And what I encourage people to do when I'm working with them, and they say, I want to be a markets trader. I said, that's great. Do this. Put uh, First, learn the skill. You know, Learn the skill. Maybe use a demo account or something like that. Learn the skill that's needed to be successful in that, with that vocation, to be effective with that particular strategy. Once you've gotten that uh, to a point where you've taken your account, maybe your metric is that you've doubled your play account, your your, your uh, phony money account, right? You doubled it from 1000 to maybe 2000 But well, once you've done that, you can feel confident that you have a system in place to trade the financial markets. And this is just an example. It, it, it goes for anything. But once you've had the opportunity to do that, then take that and now you, if you decide you can go into real money and trade with real money. But again, you want to get to the point with that initial investment where you've doubled it. Now, once you double it, you don't just sit there and say, yippee, I doubled it. You can celebrate. But you don't do that. What, what you do is you take that initial investment, that is initial, like I said, in this case, $1,000. You take that back and you put it back in your account, your regular account. Then you go forth and you trade on with the house's money. Now, what does that do? That creates a velocity of money because what, what can you do with that money you've pulled out? You can put it into other things. And what happens by and large is that if you have that mindset that you're always going to be not only investing, but determine how fast you can get that initial investment back and then taking that initial investment and putting it in something else, you start to create a velocity of money concept within your finances. And as you do that, it positions you to get into that 5% club we talked about earlier. So it's all about the mindset of not only being a good investor, I think we all understand the need to be a good investor, but don't be an investor just to let it sit there. Think about when you can get that back and put into other things. Now, I'm going to show you in a moment why that's so important. But before I do, you might be saying, well, listen, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I can't see how I can get any money to invest. So I have a problem with number one. Well, let me tell you something. We have a tool, a system, if you will, called the Octagon Method. And the whole goal of the Octagon Method is to show you how to create additional streams of income without disrupting what you're currently doing. Doing it in cracks of time. And this Octagon Method is not theory. It was something that has been put together for years and years to help create people create successful incomes. But most people don't even know about it. It's a secret because people don't know it because if you knew it, you'd do it. And the fact that you don't do it, it means you don't know it. So I encourage you to go to the octagonmethod.com after this. Don't leave me. But <laughs> go to the octagonmethod.com after this. It's a free course. You get immediate access to it. Go ahead and get it and start learning the steps that it takes to create additional streams of income in cracks of time. All right, so speaking of Grant Cardone, he has this formula he calls the wealth creation formula, and it really ties into what we've been talking about. You know, he talks about, number one, trading time for money. And guess what? When you're doing markets trading, guess what? You're still trading time for money. The time it takes to do that is time that you're trading for money. Now, I've taught folks how to do this, and one of the things I do is show folks how they can tap into a market and trade markets in like eight minutes a day. But regardless, it's still eight minutes, right? You still trade your time for money. What happens then is you convert that money into investments. You start taking some of those profits like I talked about and you put them into investments. Those investments throw off passive income. Again, a concept that goes back to Kiyosaki and Rich Dad Poor Dad where he talks about how the rich put their money into things that give passive income. And then... Here's the thing, you use that passive income to fund your lifestyle. Now, what's cool about this is the fact that he talked about how, and this is Robert Kiyosaki now, he talked about how if he had the money to buy a car, the cash in his hand, instead of buying that car, 
his mindset was that you take that money and you use it to buy a car wash. All right, just giving the example. That's an investment. And then as the car wash made money, he would use those profits to pay for the car. So at the end of the time, he would have not only the car, but he'd also have the car wash. Get it? So he's using passive income to fund your lifestyle. And you might say, well, that sounds great, but how do I get started with all that? Well, we talked about that. But the key is, get, uh, first, get the idea. The idea of taking money and being able to put into investments. Find ways to use cracks of time, to use cracks of time, to start developing additional streams of income so you have the ability to do number two, which is convert that money to, in, to investments. So I hope that's helpful. Um, again, the octagonmethod.com is where you're going to learn how to do that. So I encourage you to go there, check that information out. Like I said, it's free right now. Take advantage of it. Get it. Um, I think when you go to the octagonmethod.com, you'll be blown away for all the stuff you can get for free at that website. So definitely do that. You know, in the future, we're going to be talking about now that you have this basis. How do you put this into effect? How do you put together a daily method of operation that's going to help you put all these things that we're talking about into effect so that it's not overwhelming, so that you're not just getting all this information, you're sitting on it, and you're not using it to move yourself into that 5% club. I want that for you because I believe that if you, if you attack this, it doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes direction. You know, Zig Ziglar talks about the whole concept of being, instead of being a wandering generality, which so many people are, they're just wandering generalities out there, getting just moved by whatever winds there are that blow. Instead of being a wandering generality, be a meaningful specific, meaning that you're meaningly, you're, to, you're going with purpose in the direction that you want to go. The Octagon Method is in, in place to help you get some resources to get there. Go there. Check that out. We'll be back here next Saturday. Be blessed and make not only today, but make this next week a masterpiece. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.